All right, in this final video for our one-to-many lesson, we're going to uh, create and run some database, migration, database migrations and then test out our application. So um, let's go to a terminal. Um, well, actually, before that, let's just let's just talk a little bit about migrations, just because they are still relatively new. I know you've done them a little bit already. Um, you know, when do you run a migration and why uh, are, are two relevant questions to, to, to ask and answer. You run a database migration anytime you've changed the schema of your database, or, or, or sorry, rather, anytime you've changed the structure of your model that then needs to correspondingly result in a change in the schema of your database. So let's actually open up MySQL Workbench and look at what the schema of our database is right now. If I go into my coding events database and look at, say, my events table, we see that it has the following columns, ID, name, description, contact, email, type. Remember, we removed this property from our events class. And so we changed the structure of our model, uh, and that change has not been reflected in the database yet. So that's essentially uh, why we need to create and run a database migration. Okay. So um, and while we're here, one thing I want to do as well is um, if you're, w w while you're in your MySQL workbench here, go ahead and go into your events, uh, uh, click on your events table, right click on that, and then go down and say truncate table. And so what truncate does uh, is to delete all of the data in that specific table. And so the reason why you would do that, I actually have an empty table right now because I've been sort of messing around with my database to prepare for this lesson, but you probably have a bunch of events in here, right? Um, and uh, in particular, one of the things that we did is we made sure that our events were required to have a category, okay? And so if we were to go ahead and go and run our database migrations now, the database migrations would try to add a category column with a required, or sorry, yeah, it would try to add a, a category ID column with a required value, but we won't have assigned any uh, categories to our events because we wouldn't have had an opportunity to, right? They have types, that's not the same as categories. So any sort of uh, data in here is gonna prevent our database migration from being run cleanly. Um, now, there, there are other ways to do this that are more advanced. If you wanted to, say, translate a specific type into a specific category, you would have to go in and sort of manually uh, tweak the, the database migration code. In this case, though, we're just testing. So go ahead and, once again, truncate your events table, and that will make your uh, events table nice and clean and fresh. So when we run our database migration, we won't get any errors. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our migration. So we go to a terminal. And uh, we want to navigate to the project folder within our solution folder. So let's see where I am now. Uh, I actually, I'm actually right there. So make sure that you're two levels deep here. This is the solution folder, and this is the project folder. We need to be inside the project folder to work with migrations. And so we're going to do, uh, we're going to use an entity framework command line um, command. So .NET EF migrations add and we're going to then name the migration and we'll name it something descriptive, relate events and categories. You can give the migration any name you want as long as it's easy to at a glance kind of tell what it's doing. Then when we do this, our application will be built and any framework will scan our code and compare it to the database and uh, see what's going on. There's a warning here that's worth talking about. This says an operation was scaffolded that may result in the loss of data. Please review the migration for accuracy. What this is telling us is uh, that it's gonna delete some stuff. And in this case, it's gonna delete this type column. And so it's just saying, hey, I'm gonna delete this. Make sure that you uh, really wanna do this before you run the migration. If, if you're in a situation at work where you're changing your database schema and you wanna keep the old data, this would be the point at which you wanna uh, download a snapshot of the schema and keep it someplace safe. In this case, though, we're fine with it deleting the type column, so we won't worry about that. So now I'm just going to run the migration. Um, .NET EF database update will do the trick. Anytime you run this command, it looks at this EF migrations table and uh, compares the migrations that are in the project with the migrations that have been executed and logged in that table, and any that haven't been applied will be applied. And so that ran cleanly, which is good. Again, if that didn't run cleanly, make sure you uh, got rid of your your data in your events table. Now I'm going to come over here and we got to hit refresh. And notice when I hit refresh, I got rid of the type column and I was replaced by a category ID column. And even more so, I can uh, see if I go and look at my indexes that I have um, events category ID index. So let's see if I can. 
Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, Oh, here we go. So, uh, yeah, so let's look. I want to see some more details about this index. So to see more details about the index, I can go to um, over the events table and hit I and go to indexes. Uh, we see we have this uh, foreign key index on there. Um, under foreign keys, we'll see that this foreign key, uh, that is the category ID column, goes into the ID column on the categories table. So this is what really establishes that relationship at the relational database level. And so now when we go into our application, and um, add events with categories, we should be able to see that related back here on the database side. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to Visual Studio and start our application up, and then we'll just do some basic testing. Okay, and uh, we're going to need a category before we go into adding in events. I don't have any categories yet, so let's add one. Now I have a category. Now I can go and add an event. Oops. <laughs> well, that's not exactly what I, what I want to do. That's okay. Uh, I accidentally hit enter there too quick. So uh, it did work though. Um, the default value here of the category was meetup because that was the only one. Let's make this a little more interesting and put a different category in there too. And then let's go add another event and we'll say And then notice this dropdown. This is the work we did to refactor that dropdown so it uses the values of the uh, event category type uh, in the database. And I can select conference there and say add event. And that shows up as conference in that category column, which is great. Um, let's go look at the database and see what happened there. So if we look at events, um, let's go to the events table. And we see we have down here, we've got two events. Each of them have a category ID. Category ID 1 is for the Code with Pride event. Category ID 2 is for the WDC events. These just happen to be the same. These foreign keys happen to be the same as these uh, primary keys. That's just obviously a coincidence. If I go to my Categories table, I'll see the data there. And I'll see that I've got these two uh, primary keys matching up to the foreign keys. All right. And so uh, that indeed does the trick. That's the, that's the work that we wanted um, this to do. Um, and so, yeah, in future lessons, you'll learn to uh, work with more complicated relationships called many-to-many, -many, but that, uh, that'll do it for one-to-many. Happy coding.